Well, this morning we're going to tackle the issue of gifts, spiritual, Holy Spirit gifts. I can see y'all are excited about that. Amen. This morning I want us to uh, really realize some things that, that maybe we don't think about very often, but aren't you glad that we don't all look the same? Some of y'all were a little bit too quick on that amen right there. But we don't all act the same. We're, we're not all the same people. We have all been created differently. Every one of us. Even identical twins have a difference. God created us that way. And I want us to think about, as we're looking at this sermon series, using our gifts, that every one of us have been given a gift by God when we invite Christ into our life. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at that and examine that. But I, I think there's parts of the Bible that we don't quite understand, so we, so we kind of steer clear of those. Are y'all guilty of that? You know, you're like, ah, I, don't, I don't really want to get into that too much because I don't really grasp it, I don't understand it, and I don't know who to talk to, and so just leave it alone and I'll, I'm good with that. Well, what happens is we become a church that is not shaped the way that God would have us to be shaped. So I want us to read 1 Corinthians here, chapter 12. We're just going to look at the first 11 verses. Uh, we have several other passages that I'm going to reference today, and I'm going to encourage you, if you have your bulletin, to go this week and read these other passages. But right now we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one says, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. And some of y'all are like, whoa. Are we going to read through that one more time? Yes, we will later on. But my question is, as a believer, if you are here today, I want to ask you, do you believe the Word of God? How many of y'all believe things you don't understand how they work? If you've ever been on the internet, you need to raise your hand. Because I do not understand how I can look at something and then immediately for the next three weeks be bombarded with advertisements for that thing. Big brother, big daddy, big government, big somebody is watching us. That's just the truth. But praise the Lord, our God is watching us. Amen? So I, I want us to look at this because I, I think that it's important because I really believe that the weak link in the church today, and I know your mind can go, go a thousand miles an hour of what you think the weak link is, but now 
This being 2019 is my 30th year in ministry. I know I don't quite look 30, but I, you know, I, I've been around a few years, right? And through all of the churches that I've pastored and all the ministry that I've done, I've found one thing that is really the weakest link of the church, the local church, and it is this, that the body of believers that meet there do not function the way that God intended for them to function. We don't utilize the gifts that God has given us. And when we don't do that, we become unhealthy. How many of y'all gained 50 pounds overnight? Like, you went to bed one night, and you were like, man, wake up the next morning, and you're like, wow, 50 pounds, how did that happen? No, that doesn't happen, right? What happens is, one potato chip at a time, baby, one potato chip at a time, right? And then all of a sudden, you realize, how did I get in this shape? And I think to myself the same way, how in the world has the church gotten in the shape that it's in? And it's quite simply this. We have not understood the basics and been consistent in working on ourselves. How many of y'all know somebody else that needs help? Right? I mean, we're always, man, they should have been, they should have been there Sunday. That was a good sermon. They missed a good one. Now, when's the last time you walked out the door and said, praise God, I was there because that was for me? See, that's where we've got to change our stinking thinking. And you'll see that in Romans chapter 12, where it says that we are to renew our mind. That we are to worship with all that God's given us. So as we look at these scripture passages, I want to remind us what, what our mission is. You know, how many of y'all have, have woken up and just said, you know what, I really don't know what I'm going to do today. Did you know that there were things that needed to be done? You just didn't feel like doing it, right? They're like, I, I just don't feel like doing it. I have earned some time off. I've worked hard. You'd be amazed at how many people approach church the same way. Well, I go and sit in a blue chair at least a couple of Sundays a month. Isn't that good enough? It, it, aren't, aren't I doing my part? Only you will know whether you're doing your part according to God. But our mission, I believe, is found in Matthew chapter 28. I know if you've ever been in a Baptist church, you've heard this passage preached a lot. It's, 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 it's known as the Great Commission. And here, Jesus is talking to the disciples, but, but we're called to be what? disciples so in essence he's speaking to us he's speaking to the local church and in verse 18 it says then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We don't like to be commanded, do we? Y'all probably wouldn't come back Sunday after Sunday if I started getting up here and commanded y'all to do stuff all week long, would you? We don't like to be told what to do. But isn't that what God gave us Scripture for? He's telling us what we need to do. How many of you have followed your doctor's orders to the T? And it worked, did it not? I see that hand back there, Rachel. Right? If you follow the instructions to the T, more times than not, it's going to work out the way that it's supposed to. How many of y'all like to cheat on the instructions? Like you only read, when you open up the instructions, you read 1, 3, 5, and 7, right? You don't like even numbers, so you just skip those parts. But that's what we end up doing in Scripture. We like these passages that are fluffy and lovey-dovey, but we don't like it when Paul says that therefore. We don't like it when the Great Commission says to obey the things I've commanded you to do. We're just like spoiled rotten children, amen? 
When mama does says, go clean your room, and all of a sudden they put their hands on their hip and give you a glare, it's time to take the belt off. That's what time it is right there, right? But we don't do that anymore because we're afraid of the people around us more than we're afraid of what God has commanded us to do. That's why they're obnoxious people at Walmart, H-E-B, and other grocery places because they think, hey, let's load up the entire family plus cousins, nephews, and nieces all under the age of five and let's give them all a basket and let's go have fun and hang out at H-E-B. It's the new amusement park. <laughs> and it's free. See, somebody's used it before, right? How many of y'all been frustrated? Like, I think there ought to be adult restaurants like times for just adults, like adult shopping, just time for adults. I know Gloria's going to see me right after church. I already know, all right? <laughs> but but that, that's just one of those things that, that we, get, we get involved in and we're like, I don't want to raise other people's children. But unfortunately, we have adults that aren't adults. They're still children because they were never raised the way that they should have been. And here's the thing we need to realize. We have way too many people in the church that haven't been instructed to learn Scripture and go by Scripture and do what it commands us to do. And when we start doing that, we're amazed at how God starts working in our lives. Look at this passage here. As it talks about the things that we've been commanded to do. What have we been commanded to do in Matthew? It's right there. Make disciples. What else? Baptize. Who's going to be with us? The Spirit's going to be with us. God's going to be with us. Till when? Till the very end. We're not at the end yet, are we? So what are we supposed to still be doing? Making disciples. Going. As it actually is translated, it means this. It doesn't mean go. It means as you are going. You're already going. How many of y'all going to go eat after church? Three of you. You're a bunch of liars that came to Top End today. I'll tell you what. Okay? So, how many of y'all going to go to work tomorrow? I'm not asking whether you want to or not. It's just whether you're going, right? So, it means, the true translation here says, since you are already going, it's not make an extra trip. It's, it's not go out of your way. Since you're already going to be at the gas pump, why not tell somebody to have a good day? Since you're already going to be talking to the clerk, buying your stuff at the convenience store, why not say, I'd love to invite you to go to the church that I attend? Because you're already there. It's not like, all right, everybody go find a new place to go. That's the translation here. It says, since you're already going, make disciples. Since you're already going to be there, baptize those who believe. See, the church has, has missed the mark, and I think the weak link is we don't understand our gifts and how we're supposed to use them. So let's get into spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are found in a couple of different places in the Bible. Okay, In Romans chapter 12, I've already referred to that earlier today. I want to read part of chapter 12, but I want to encourage you this week to read chapter 12. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because I love I'm just going to read verses 1 and two real quick, because again, here is, is almost a command. How many of y'all have been urged before? You know, you can be urged by somebody's tone, or you can be urged by somebody's belt. Amen? There's, there's a couple of different kinds of urgings. So verse 1 here in chapter 12 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Oh, wait a minute. I thought going to church on Sunday morning was my true and proper worship. No. That's gathering with the body. And we worship together. But your true and proper worship is to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, how many of y'all been guilty of keeping up with the Joneses? No offense to the Joneses that are here today, right? But, but we do that. How in the world are they driving a new vehicle? I know they don't make that much money. 
Don't you know that just because you see something doesn't mean it's paid for? Right? Too many living on credit. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. By what? By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. Verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy is in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Oh, I think I read that last week, right? What's the next what's the next part say? What's love supposed to be? We talked about that last week, didn't we? Love must be sincere. Here in chapter 12, it talks about we're all different. We're, we're all one body. We, we are. We say it at the end of every service. What do we say? We are top hand. What's that mean? It means we're all top hand. But not all of us want to work in the nursery. Oh, I just found a lot of nursery workers. I only heard two amens there. That means you just all signed up to serve in the nursery over this next year. Let me say that one more time. We're not all gifted to work in the nursery. Oh, oh, we just had a bunch of quitters on the nursery right there. You see, because we're not. We're not. We don't all have that gift. We're not all gifted with mercy. Some of us, we don't have that gift. And we're going to learn about gifts and natural talent over the next couple of weeks, okay? Because there's a difference. But when you are given the gift of compassion, it means that you can mourn with those that are mourning. When you are given the gift of administration, it means that you can help manage and, and, and organize and administer and make sure that things work the way that they're supposed to. When you're given the gift of healing, when it means that you can go and pray and lay your hands on people, there's a gift to that. But we're all supposed to be doing those things in the measure given to us. But too many of us think, well, that's somebody else's job. That's what somebody else is supposed to do. We're all supposed to do what we're supposed to do. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 12 through chapter 14, I'm not going to read. I read part of that this morning. I'm not going to read two chapters to you this morning. The reason that is bolded in your bulletin is because this is your assignment this week. Okay? I want you to read Romans chapter 12. I want you to read 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. I want you to ask the Lord to speak to your heart in such a way that He gives you a clear understanding of what Scripture is teaching us about gifts. In Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the maturity of the body. Here's another chapter that speaks about the gifts that we've been given. This morning, you can say, well, well, Brother Greg, I mean, I, what gifts, what, what, are, what are you talking about? Well, there's several types of gifts. There, there's actually kind of three directional ways to look at this group of gifts. There, there's establishing gifts. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. There's supporting gifts. There's ministry gifts. Gifts that can be organized in these three different categories. Really, the establishing gifts are, are those gifts of pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, prophet. Those are the ones that are, that are functioning to, to plant and grow churches. That's their calling. That's their gifting. I think I fall into that category. After planting several churches and being the lead pastor, that's a gift that I, I feel like has, has, has been given to me as has been given to several others within the church. Some of you like to teach, but your calling is not to be a teacher. 
Your gift is compassion and mercy. Some of you have been called to lead, but you don't want to lead because you don't want to deal with all the stuff that comes with leadership. Right? But, but that's your gift. And that, that, that's where God can bless you and those around you the most. But with every gift comes frustration and complication. Because then people start judging you. People start looking at you. Well, who do they think they are? I'm a child of God. I know who I am. See, the problem is most believers don't know who they are. And so they're afraid because they're embarrassed because they don't completely understand the Bible. I don't completely understand the Bible, but that hasn't stopped me for 30 years from preaching it. Amen? I'll understand it better by and by. But what I do understand and what I do know is to proclaim the truth of the gospel that Jesus loves us. And when we invite Him into our life, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us and equips us. Here's some supporting gifts. The supporting gifts really support the work of the church, the ministry, prophecy, service. Some of y'all just like to serve. You're like, I'll take the trash out. I'll mow the grass. I'll, I'll do whatever. Just, just tell me. I, I'm, I'm all in there. Some of y'all are like, I ain't into service. Is there a gift called sleeping? I'm into that gift right there. Right? Like, I'm into me gift. Like, that's the gift that I... There's no gift called sleeping, okay? I just want you to know that. Some supporting gifts. Some other supporting gifts. Teaching, encouragement, giving, giving, administration, leadership, mercy. See, what happens in the church when other people have to do the work because people aren't utilizing their gifts, that, that, that's when the, when the pastor teacher has to cut the grass because the person that has the gift of service doesn't want to show up and cut the grass. Uh-oh, it got quiet all of a sudden. Now don't misunderstand me, I love cutting grass. Sometimes it's the only time in the week that I get to see that I actually accomplished anything. Ministry's tough sometimes. You go pray with people, you, you intervene and you, and you help a couple that's, that's struggling in their marriage, and all of a sudden you've gone seven days and you look behind you and don't look like nothing changed. Boy, give me some green grass in the spring and a gasoline lawnmower, amen? Because I can look behind me and see that I accomplished something. But some of you have the gift of service. You're like, I'll serve. Where, where do you need some help? I don't care what it is. Just tell me and I'll figure it out. Some of us have the gift of giving. Some people just give. They give it their time. They give it their talent. They give it their pocketbook. Some of y'all saying, yeah, I keep, I keep hoping I'll win the lottery because I'm going to give God a lot of money then. If you ain't giving God a lot of money now, you ain't going to give God a lot of money when you win the lottery. That's probably why you ain't winning the lottery. Because God already knows your heart. See, you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm ready to do it. You didn't get fat overnight. You ain't going to get skinny overnight. Right? Okay? So it's a process. If you want to get closer to God, it's one day at a time. Who, who sang that song? Let me, let me hear from some of my older adults here. One day at a time. Come on, who was the lady that sang it? Christy who? Lane. Okay? What did that song mean? One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. What did the band just sing? One breath. Every day, what do we need? Jesus. So when we're leaning on Jesus every day, then we are functioning in our gifts in the way that God has called us to do that. Ministry gifts. Wisdom. Some of you are sure you're married to a person that doesn't have that gift, right? Wisdom. But that's a gift. Scripture says that's a gift to have wisdom. Knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy. Distinguishing of spirits. See, some people have the gift of walking into a room and saying, you know what, I need to go ahead and back out of this room right here. Because there's some stuff going on in here that's not healthy. i got a friend that's got that gift. It's weird. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, we need to go. Right now? Yeah, right now. Okay. Because I've, I've seen it in his, in his life. I know that he, that, he, that he functions that way. And then to come to find out, there was a horse wreck right after we left. He was able to, to determine that because he was led by the Spirit to say, you know what, this ain't a good place to be. 
Y'all ever been in a place like that where you wish somebody would say, hey, it's time to get out of here? Speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues. Oh, y'all were just waiting for me to get to that part. I know y'all well enough. You're not worried about administration. You're not worried about giving. You're not worried about teaching. Let's get to the good stuff. The least of the gifts. Scripture says, the least of the gifts is speaking in tongues. And the church gets hung up on that more than any other spiritual gift. I don't understand it. God didn't tell me I had to understand it all. But what I do understand is God's not doing anything different than He's always ever done. So, if I can believe in the gift of administration, and I can believe in the gift of leadership, and I can believe in the gift of healing, then I've got to believe that God still has the gift of speaking in tongues and the gift of somebody interpreting the tongues. I've been on staff in a church that believed this. I was on staff at a church that believed this. And I also was at the church when individuals got called down in the church for trying to stand up and speak in tongues, and there wasn't anybody there to interpret. When you get out of line of Scripture, you ain't been shook like you've been shook by God. When you stay with Scripture, you ain't been blessed like you've ever been blessed. See, the key here is understanding that we have to abide and walk by what Scripture says, not by what we've experienced or what we think is right. The gifts that we have in this church could change the world. We run... Where's, where's Charles at? What, what's our numbers today? It was 320 in here. 323 in here. Think about that. If every one of us that's a follower of Christ was utilizing our gift, what could we accomplish? Amazing things. I'm all about amazing things. I'm all about seeing the hand of God. You experiencing God, people? You better hang on tight. Because what's going to happen is, you're going to start seeing where God's working, and then you're held accountable for joining in. How many of you ever passed by, by somebody had a flat tire, and, and, and you said, I ought to stop. And you keep on going. That wasn't bad pizza, all right? That wasn't bad pizza that you ate the night before. When, when, when you feel like, and you hear, and you know that it's God speaking to you to do something, and you don't do it, you know what that's called? Sin. To know to do right and not do it is sin. To know that God has told you to do something, you say, well, I, I, I'm going to get around to it. Come on, how many of y'all ever got around to it before? Right? How many of y'all have missed an opportunity before? Because you, you didn't do an act when God said, go do it now. You see, when we, when we hesitate, we miss God's blessing. And the church has hesitated too long. The reason that our nation is in the shape that it's in is because believers are sitting on their hands. It's because we're actually not doing what we know God calls us to do because we're afraid what people might say. But look at what they're saying now. We're in a mess in this nation. The things that Scripture says is wrong is now right in America. The things that America says is right does not match up with Scripture. You go back and you read how this nation was formed and shaped, it was formed and shaped on a Christian belief. Why is that? Because that's where our founding fathers were and wanted a nation. They'd already seen what could happen without God. It's time we get off cruise control and learn who we are and how we're best to live our lives. Churches don't function well without utilizing the gifts that have been placed within the local church. Hey, we're not like the churches in town. Hey, don't offend too many people. We've got some townies that show up all the way from Waco that come out here. And that's all right. We want y'all to come. But we're not first or second anything. We're top hand. But that means we've got to be top hand. We gotta quit saying it at the end of the service and go live it all week long. 
God doesn't need cheerleaders. He needs obedient followers. And so when we understand that, hey, my gift is to hold the door open and say, thanks for being at top end. That ain't hard to do, but some of us can't do it. Amen? We're like, I can't look at anybody in the eye. I just, I just crumble. It's not your gift then to do that. But some of you, you can do that. I'm going to encourage you to do it. When you do that, you're blessed. And the church is blessed. And when the church is blessed, the community in which the church is in is blessed. And we're called to be a blessing. God gives the power, Jesus gives the ministry, and the Holy Spirit gives us the gifts. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to hone in on these gifts. I, I want to help you know what your gift is. Say, Greg, I, I just, I've been going to church all my life, and I don't know about this gift stuff, and I, I'm, not sure that, I'm not sure that I got a gift. Well, I'm going to ask you, do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? If you say yes, according to what we believe, when you accept Him, the Holy Spirit comes within you to dwell. How many of y'all have things in your house that you don't use right now? Like, like we could have a huge garage sale at your house right now and make $53, right? <laughs> okay, but, but so, this, so this is what I want to tell you. When you leave today, I want you to understand something. You have something within you that you haven't been equipped or understand how to use. That doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't make it bad. It just means that the church has not equipped the believers to understand what's living within them. So when you understand what's living within you, then you can utilize it. Then you can, then you can do it. Amen? Men, I've got, I got to ask you a question. Did you ever buy something and not tell your wife, and it's hidden somewhere, and, and one of these days you're going to pull it out and use it, Right? But right now is not a good time to talk about it on the way home from church when she asks. Okay, this, this is what I want you to do. Jesus does not want you to be a secret spiritual leader. Men, it's time for us to rise up and lead our families. If you haven't done it in the past, okay. But you can start right now. You can learn. That's what our role is to equip you and teach you because then you will be using what God has put in you that gift so that the world will know who their son is, his son, Jesus Christ. Here's our challenge. To use our gifts so that we can glorify God through the mission of the church. Our mission is to go, as we're going, to teach and preach, to baptize, so that others can know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Over the next couple of weeks as we talk more about spiritual gifts and what gifts we have and how do we utilize them and where do they get connected and how does the local church use them, the first and most important thing that you have to ask yourself is, do I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? That is a yes or no question. Either you do or you don't have Jesus living within you. Say, well, Brother Greg, I'm not sure. Then you need to visit with one of the pastors before you leave. If you hesitate right now in answering that question, you need to say, I need to get that taken care of. Now, once you get that taken care of, then you need to understand it's time to take that role. Because one morning you wake up on a Friday and you wake up in the emergency room. Isn't that right, Steve? Now, Steve's been thinking over the last weekend. Haven't you, Steve? Yeah. That was close. You don't want a close call. Because sometimes it's no longer a close call, it's the final call. And you don't want to wake up this week standing before Jesus and say, Lord, if you'd have waited two more weeks, I would have figured out my spiritual gift. If you want to start serving the Lord, today is the day to say, Lord, whatever it is that you've gifted me to do, I want to go do. And I want to learn how to do it well. This morning, our pastors are going to be down front. The band's going to come back up. Uh, this, is, this is our church time to, to come down here and pray, to pray with one of the pastors. Men, this is your first step to be the spiritual leader of your family if that's what God's calling you to do. He is if you're a man. It doesn't mean you've got to come down here and pray, but maybe you could learn 
to teach your children how to pray. Maybe you want to just come and give thanks for what God's blessed you this week. See, life is all about movement. When life doesn't move, what happens? It dies. It gets stagnant. It stinks. But when it's moving, there's energy there that says there is life there. And we already know that there's life here because Jesus is here. Amen? This morning I want you to stand with me. The band's going to come up. I want to lead us in a time of prayer. Father, we we come to you this morning and, and we confess that we've recognized what a weak link is. Lord, we've seen it with our own eyes before. We've seen that the one thing that needs to be put together so that the whole effort can be accomplished. Father, I pray for those that are here today that are still searching to know the truth about who you are. And Father, I pray that today would be the day that they open up their heart to invite you in so that they can know the truth of life. Father, we're so thankful for the gifts that you give each and every one of us as believers. I pray that you will help us to have a prayerful heart this week as we seek to read your word and to learn more about how you give us gifts, how you bless us, and how we're to utilize the gifts you've given us. Father, I pray for this time that your spirit would start within us in such a way that we would know that you are speaking directly to us, Father. Lord, use the band and and our pastors as we love on one another today. Thank you for your word. May it live through us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.